dude was in. Jane, look, the shirt arrived, man. <coughs> oh, man. What the fuck, man? Because I got a whole list of stuff to talk about. Hold on. Let's see if I can keep this up. Man, look, so, <clears throat> me and my boy were chopping up at work for a while, and then bought a bunch of different stuff. And I hear a lot of idiots talk about, uh, basically, systemic racism don't exist. Bruh. So, you know, I had a kind of nothing habit. But check this out. People don't realize how deep it is, though. It's a whole lot deeper than what people think. Matter of fact, while I'm thinking about it, let's talk about this here. Uh, the racism in police departments. Bro, listen, the police department was built on racism. James, what's happening? James, what's happening? Facts. Hey, look, the police department, uh, man, James, look, James. Man, James, James, James. Oh, oh, dang. James, the shirt came through your wife to appreciate. Look, check this out, though. Man, uh, police department built on racism. The whole police department, even, it came about because they had, they had to put somebody in place to basically keep slaves on the plantation because they'll, they'll run away with whatever. So they created deputies. That's, that's why deputies still have a lot of power to this day. Uh, deputies have more jurisdiction than a regular police. So, Shepard, what's happening? So, all right, so that was the beginning of it. So a lot of people, you know, they don't understand, like, you have to know the roots of something to know how something works. Man, somebody just had this whole conversation. Just like, um, uh, like, uh, what the heck we was talking about? This whole Confederate flag, uh, commotion, whatever you want to call it. Look, check this out. I've had a lot of conversation with people, and you know they they wave this flag and uh, this is my heritage and all this other crap, right? And I used to be so frustrated because I'm feeling like these people don't really understand. Uh. Some, you know, the older ones, they don't want to. But some of them don't understand. The reason being is because I was reading and doing some research today it's because they've been brainwashed their whole life. Been brainwashed. So, all right. So I ain't, I ain't gonna knock some of the people say, hey, this, this Confederate flag from, from representing my heritage or whatever. They grandfather, great-grandfather, and all them fought in. All right, let's go with this. But what were they fighting for? They were fighting to keep black people slaves. That's what they don't, well, they, some of them get it. All right, and some of the young ones, in, they, they probably don't get it because they don't, you know, they, they don't even think about it. You know, they get them focused on one thing and that's what it is until somebody like me bring it to their attention. Yeah, your grandfather fought in the Civil War. He was, you know, part of the Confederate. But what was he fighting for? He was fighting to keep black people slaves. So let's talk about the roots of everything. Nobody wants to talk about the roots of these old racist ass statues they got everywhere all over and people get mad because they knock them down. That shit need to go. It need to go. <laughs> like, like all this stuff, you know, let's go even deeper. So me and my barber chopping up today and he was talking about how you don't even realize that it penetrated your mind without you thinking about it. <laughs> Facts, laws, but you still waving these. Man, come on. But look, check this out. You always hear when the South they talk about it, black cat, bad luck. You know, you put on black when you're going to a funeral. You put on white when you're going to a wedding. It's a celebration. Like, white is better. You know what I'm saying? It's way deeper than what people think. You don't even realize this stuff because you just operate in it daily. But a lot of stuff is a whole lot deeper than what you think. You know what I'm saying? You you look at black as being bad automatically. 
you know, just by the color. You, all right. You go somewhere today, you have on all black. Everybody is going to watch you. Everybody. The police don't want to want to know why you got all black. They're going to think you're trying to rob a store or something. You up to something. You got on these, these dark colors. This one is, is, is a whole lot deeper. So... Yeah, but anyway, yeah, it's the, it's the system, the system as a whole, tear down, rebuild it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, all right, then you got, I've heard people say, uh, well, all right, let's talk about this. Plenty of times at my job, professional environment, right? You know what I'm saying? Over the years, and I had to just really learn the do's and don'ts. But like when I was fairly new, a lot of people used they used to say a lot of regular stuff around me because it, it just in them. But you know, it could be two or three o'clock in the morning. We we had on a run. They got the sirens uh just blaring. Yeah, they got the sirens loud. They blowing the horn. They doing all. There ain't even nobody on the street to blow it. But they doing it to wake people up. And they talking noise the whole time. Yeah, they need to get up. Some of us got to work and blah, blah, blah. Like people in them areas don't go to work. You know what I'm saying? But they won't go to a neighborhood that most of the people like them, that look like them, live in and do the same thing. They went in, we, I've been at stations like that. We're going to run. They never, they got the lights on. They never turn the side on. You know what I'm saying? We make a run, if it's a black person, not all, some on they stand off and don't really want to do nothing. We make a run, white person, they all in, right there. And I had a captain that did, he, he used to do it all the time until somebody brought it to my attention. I started paying attention to him. That's why, man, I don't even talk about him. He, yeah, let, let's, let me hear it But, you hear all this bad stuff all the time, but nobody wanna hold themselves accountable for their actions. Man. That nobody wanna hold themselves accountable for their actions. You know what I'm saying? Uh, look at Black Wall Street, right? Everybody wants this uh, segregation, right? The black people in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Had their own thing. They done built whole functional city doing better than any city in the whole U.S. No, they did. They found a reason to go burn it down and murder hundreds of people. You know what I'm saying? Took everything from them. Over 1,200 people was homeless. All right? So these same people, they won't segregation. These people built everything. Medical facilities, school, hospitals. I mean, the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? You don't want them to live by you. They do their own thing. You still go tear it up. So no matter what you do as a black person, you still, people still going to come at you just for being black and being alive. You know what I'm saying? Me and somebody were talking today, and, you know, matter of fact, somebody made a comment about uh, what did blacks do or whatever. To be treated this way. <laughs> One of my homeboys said survive. Cause that's it. You get you get done wrong just for surviving, bruh. It, just just for being alive. Going through everything you could possibly and imagine going through as a whole and still surviving. The people still mad at you because you're alive, bruh. You ain't done that wrong. That's it. They mad at you because you're alive. And but what I'm saying is I'm also saying something else. So I seen, I was wondering what the commotion was about in Atlanta about the cops pulling a gun on some teenagers. All right. Some of this stuff need to be channeled, man, because I feel as, as a whole, as black people, we doing too much, right? I watched the whole video. Man, that cop ain't done nothing wrong, bro. He got a call that six, six teenagers was at a store trying to steal, 
and one of them had a gun. So when he pull up, yeah, he had his gun. Now, the six of them is one of him. All right? He never disrespect them. He never talked down to them. He was telling them, let me see your hands. I don't blame them. Don't, you ain't finna make no sudden move and get the ups on me. So let me see your hands. And then once he got up on him, he put his gun up. And he, had, he had a conversation with him. Hey, why the dude calling and saying one of y'all had a gun? And he just having a conversation. You got all these people in the crowd coming over, getting in the middle of this crap, which is number one. Interfering with a police investigation is a crime. So bag up. That's number one. Number two, you know what I'm saying? This dude never, he never did them wrong. He had a conversation with him. He talked to him. He told him, hey, look, man, y'all come back to the store. Come on, walk with me. Calm in the mud. They go to the store. He found the gun that uh, one of the dudes had. And it looked like a, uh, it looked like a 380, but it was actually a BB gun. And he didn't even make no arrest. You know what I'm saying? Like he was talking to them. Hey, bro, this could get you killed, man. This looked like a, it looked like a real gun. So you would have pulled this and somebody would have, would have killed one of y'all, whatever. Now you got everybody on the news saying, hey, man, he wrong. You got interviewing the kid. He was scared for it. Like, we don't carry no gun. You were too young to have one anyway. You know what I'm saying? You got to be 21 to have a handgun. 18, I mean, you can have a... Uh, a rifle under that age, but listen, right and right and wrong is wrong. You can't just be going out to all these police and saying these people doing wrong, these people doing their job, that's what they trying to do. You got a gun, they up their gun, that's what it is. Now, shoot somebody in the back and stomping their dead body and choking somebody, putting your knee in their neck, that's wrong. But you can't you can't put everybody in the same category because everybody ain't the same way. You know what I'm saying? And the other thing, Angel, what's happening? The other thing is the fact that if everybody got a problem with the way everything is being done, right? Which, just like me, if I have a problem or something, I'm going to fix the problem. I'm not going to keep complaining. People keep complaining, but they ain't done that. So you don't want certain people patrolling in your neighborhoods. You don't want this. You don't want that. Well, why not apply to build police then? And then you can... Uh, uh, patrol the neighborhood how you want to patrol. You can build a relationship with the community like you want to build it. You don't like the sentence that the judge gave you. Won't you go to school to be a judge? You don't like the way the nurses and doctors treat you. Won't you go to be a doctor? Everybody got something to say, but who doing something? All this marching is cool if you're doing it the right way. We'll give you a little history lesson, all right? Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. You hit Malcolm X, he beat your ass, period. You hit Martin Luther King, he ain't hitting back. So a lot of people, ignorant people, man, Martin Luther King, he was scary, he this and that. He had a whole agenda, and they were too stupid to even realize. The thing is, all this stuff, uh, all this stuff was happening to black people, but no laws are being changed, right? So you know what you gotta do? You gotta walk, be innocent, not do nothing, get your ass beat on national TV, let the whole world see how you getting treated, and you ain't fighting back. That's what's really happening. That's what he was trying to do. Take Malcolm X, for example. I ain't knocking him. But you hear him, he beat your ass. Now they put you on TV saying, look how aggressive he is, and, and he's fighting, and he said he'll kill us. They going to edit it however they want to edit it. So you got you to gotta learn how to channel what you're doing. You got to move the right way. You know what I'm saying? If you want change, you can't come out burning buildings up and doing all this other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, be cool, be easy, march, say whatever you got to say, but all the violence, I ain't saying all the protests violent, I ain't saying that, so let me put that out there, but what I'm telling you is, if somebody getting out of line, y'all a group, all right, y'all might not even know each other, but y'all one unit, y'all marching for the same cause. You see somebody getting out of line doing something he supposed to do, snatch his ass back. What's happening? Bullet. <laughs> hey, look, somebody getting out of line, grab his ass by the collar. Hey, you tripping. You tripping. You finna fuck up our whole purpose of marching, our agenda. You can't be being all aggressive. You need to get in line and get right and be quiet. You know what I'm saying? You know, say whatever you got to say, but, but keep moving. You can't go bucking a whole crowd of police because you're going to lose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you might win that battle, but you're going to lose the war. So 
Chill out, man. Say what you got to say and leave it at that. You go bugging the police and they beat your ass. But guess what? You might not physically touch them, but you in their face and all this shit here. You gonna get your ass beat. But the thing is, you done got your ass beat for nothing. Because they gonna, the video gonna show that you was aggressive toward them. That's the thing. You can't do this shit, bruh. You can't go bugging these people. And then when these people whoop your ass, and then you get on there and play victim. You Nah. March, say what you got to say, go to the capitals or whatever, say you won't change and all that, but you can't go attacking these people even though they beat black people every single day. You ain't going to get changed by fighting back, see, you know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. You ain't, it, it's not going to happen, you know what I'm saying? The more you keep putting pressure on, on, on these lawmakers, that's what it's going to do, because guess what? At the end of the day, they need your vote. And when you ain't voting for their ass, they gonna be doing anything they gotta do to try to get you on their side. Hey, you want us to do this? Hey, you give me your vote. I, I got it. That's how you do. That's how you make change, man. Uh, being violent ain't gonna help me. And you know, I had to learn that over time because, you know, I was somewhat a product of my environment. Well, I grew up. I already knew what time was. You can't be no victim. So, you, you better attack the situation head first. All right, let me give you an example. So, since that was my mindset, even though I was chill, but it didn't take much for me to, to go zero. So, because I'm thinking like, so I got to get you first. You ain't about to hurt me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get you. So, I, I still kind of had that mindset when I was on when I first got in the fire department, and, and you know I had to control it over time. So I had to learn that I was in a different belt. Let's fast forward to now. With the neighborhood, I was the youngest person in my whole entire neighborhood, and I'm black. Most of the people in this neighborhood weren't black. Everybody owned their house in this neighborhood, and nobody rented. So I've been in my house nine years. One of my neighbors that's been, I don't know how long he's been in his house, still a couple houses down. Me and this dude never had a conversation, never spoke to each other nine years, nothing, right? So he come, uh, I was working on my trailer or something. I brought it to the house, and I don't, I don't always bring it here, but I think I was working on it. So it was like 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. He come walk down to my house. And start saying something to me about my trailer in front of my house. <laughs> so, you know, I had to not come off as being aggressive. So I'm really frustrated though. All right. So, end of it. So I'm mad. I'm trying to figure out. Cause I already know you're racist. So I'm trying to figure out how could I get back at him without punching him. So, what I did was, let me find it. Let me show you something. I thought outside the box, if I could find it. Dang. Man, I can't find it right now. But, what I did was, I went to Home Depot, I bought a for rent sign, and I wrote on the sign, I said, we'll be, we'll be available in six weeks, price $500 a month. And I stuck that big sign in my front yard. Cloud Red knew it was going to cause chaos, right? You got all these people paying all this money for their houses. Everybody own their house. <laughs> hey, Mafia, I appreciate it. So I was like, okay, this will get, them, this will get some attention because now, I done lowered the price in this neighborhood so much by putting this sign out here. It's going to bring the value of the neighborhood down. Now, you can't afford to move, but now you feel like you got to move because people that you consider low class, low life, can afford to move in here now. And so my next door neighbor, me and her, was talking, and I said, I need you to help me sell this store. 
because I seen all the commotion. They was having meetings in the middle of the street and all kind of stuff and pouring down in my house. Yeah, I got some attention now since you want to play. I've been in mud nine years. Uh, I was 26 when I moved in. I was looking a whole lot younger than this then. Uh, never had a party in this month. They ain't got no broke down cars in the yard, nothing. I'm pretty much at work. Most, I was working a whole lot then. If y'all think I work now, it's nothing. I was working like 85% of my life was work. Probably 90. I was at work that much. So I went hard home anyway. But fast forward to now, I've been here all the time. Never caused no problems in the neighborhood, but you want to bother me. Let me show you how you play this game. So when they realized what was going on, like every freaking person in the neighborhood, they was they was in the uproar. They ain't know what to do. So I told my next door neighbor, and, and uh, she was like, "You moving? I hope you ain't moving." I was like, "Nah," but I said, "I got this sign in the yard for a reason." Told him, told her what was going on. And I said, "This the deal. You gotta help me sell this store. I got this lady moving in, a black lady with nine kids. She moved from the project." And she's just trying to have a better life for her kids. I said, you got to help me sell this store. She's like, all right, cool. And I left that sign in my yard for six weeks, man. Those people, they didn't know what to do. They was about to lose their freaking mind. And then people started calling me about the house, and I had to make up a story. And, and I got, you know, I had to take the sign down. But I had to learn that's how you deal. You got to deal with people like they deal with you. Every situation ain't the same. I can't go punching this man in his face because I'm going to jail. And then if I go to jail, I lose my job and, you know, everything else, you know, just like a domino effect. So you got to learn how to deal with situations the right way. You can't attack every situation being super aggressive, want to whoop everybody. It's a, it's a way for everything to be done. You know, uh, and... Another conversation, one of the retired chiefs from my job, he was being a sucker, you know, he, uh, he made, I'm glad I thought about that too, but he, he made a comment on Facebook about, uh, told people what's happening, hey, yeah, yeah, I got the truck, I got the truck, man, it's, it's a pretty deep, intense conversation, it ain't, it ain't about truck, but you know, I'm going to call you on it. So, uh, but he made he made a, a post about uh, that, you know, everything going on with protests and everything, that, that black people don't do the same thing when a black person gets killed or something like that. Uh, I don't remember how he worded it, but everybody attacked him, right? And he was just kissing ass. No, no, you good. You can stay for the conversation, bro. I'm just, I'm just letting you know that, you know, this, it's a, it's kind of one of them left turn conversations. But he, uh, so let me say this, and then I bag up to this. All right, crime is gonna happen where you live. So this is part of systemic, systemic racism, black on black crime. That those words, black on black crime, is part of the problem. Because crime is going to happen. But no, what's happening? Crime is going to happen where you live. If you live in an all-black neighborhood, crime is going to happen. If you live in an all-white neighborhood, crime is going to happen. If you live in Mexican and so on. So crime is going to happen in, in the area you live in. But while black people just focus on black-on-black -black crime, everybody in the world do the same thing. You go to Israel and all these other places in Iraq, they blowing people up and killing each other. Ain't nobody saying Islamic on Islamic crime. You know what I'm saying? It's part of systemic racism. I got to make black people look bad. It's, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? You know, I've made, I've heard, and I'm going to get back to that whole chief story, sucker. But look, I've, I've, heard, I've heard people say, I done been in stores and everything. I heard people say, yeah, uh, yeah, the black, man, at work, I've heard tons of times. Those black people, they get welfare, food stamps, and they this and that, and now I want to work, bro. Listen, I'm going to give you another history lesson. None of this stuff was created for black people. Nothing. Zero. All this stuff, uh, uh, 
Bro, reality, what's that name? You know, Bun B statement. Yeah, facts. Look, all this stuff was created for white people because white people had large families. So I got to provide them with something, with food stamps and, and welfare and stuff like that so they can take care of their family, large family. When, and all black people was Republicans, all black people were Republicans. When that shift happened, the blacks went over to being Democrats. They had, in order for them to become Democrats, they had to offer them something. And that's when all this stuff was offered to them. And that's when you seen the destruction of the black household. Uh, I think in the 60s. That's when you seen a complete destruction of the black household. You know what I'm saying? That's when you see dads was kicked out of the household and, you know, you're leaving little boys to be men. They're boys. They have to be trained up to be a man. So that's when you see a lot of stuff happen. You know what I'm saying? But the mindset of a young person, a young black person now anyway, is so fearless that a person like that can make a huge impact. If you can tell her that, that fearlessness, they'll be a force to be reckoned with, bro. Civil Rights Act started with Civil Rights Act. Yeah, facts. Locked up. Oh, you talking about the, the black people in jail? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, yeah, more than you're right. You know, uh, hold on. You, you saying what started with the Civil Rights Act? The destruction of the household? That's what you're saying? Oh, uh, but, oh, facts. Hey, but, James, what you talking about? That happened during Reagan terms. Reagan was part of that. Ronald Reagan was part of that. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to talk, they don't want to talk about all the stuff that happens in this country that they always want to blame black people for, like you talking about. The drug. All these drugs was dumped in these neighborhoods, and then you take them to jail when they use it or sell it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Reconstruction period. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it, was, it was all dumped on them. And you got to think about it. Police department, right? Let's go back to that. We already talked about the origin of it, right? They can kill people, and the laws are designed... Well, now they got to do something about it. But the laws was designed to protect them when they killed people anyway. It was designed that way. You know what I'm saying? And justified, justified. The only, only justifiable homicide you're going to get as a civilian is the fact that somebody got a gun and they trying to kill you and you end up shooting and killing them first. But let me tell you how jacked up this is because I know somebody that's happened to. I know somebody that was... Uh, a convicted felon for drug charges or whatever. All right, this dude walked down to his house, shot him in the chest to, to kill him in front of his mama, and he was unconscious. And the guy was threatening his mama. This is real story. This really happened. This dude was threatening to shoot his mama. He woke up and he shot the guy, and he ended up killing the dude. Right. He ended up surviving. He got shot in the chest, but he survived, right? All right. He, he got off on self-defense, so he didn't go to jail. Months later, he ended up going to jail because they said, oh, you, you weren't supposed to have a gun. You, you got a felony record. So, you know what I'm saying? It, you think about the system. Even, even though somebody shot him in the chest and tried to kill him, he shot the guy back and killed him. He still went to jail later. So, you you know what I'm saying? The system rigged. Your system, I get it. You don't want a felon with a gun. Blah, blah, but it's still rigged. You know what I'm saying? Police can kill people. Nothing happen. You kill somebody that's trying to kill you. And you still, they'll still find a way to take you to jail. <laughs> I mean, you think about that. You know what I'm saying? Tons of people have it too. Uh... And this whole, how they got the laws written, man, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but, man, me and my cousin almost went to jail on a murder charge. I was a rookie on the fire department. 
So this was like 2007 or uh, 2008 or somewhere in there. All right. We was coming down one of the main roads in the city. We got a, a street that runs straight through the middle of the city, Linwood. We coming up. And I'm speeding a little bit. I'm doing like 10 over. Well, I passed by the cops. Got my brakes. I was like, dang, he about to pull me over. Because, like, no, you're not. So he then initially turned the lights on. Follow me, you know, a couple miles up. Pull me over. I'm, I'm getting my license ready. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna get back to your store. Uh, so man, I started leaving Democratic Party. Blacks looking at Democrats like they have this interest in heart. Well, uh, that makes sense. These laws are so outdated. Facts, they are super outdated. So let's get back to the store. So. They pull me over, I'm getting my license stuff ready, thinking it's just a regular traffic stop. So, cop get on the uh, PA, like, drive a step out of the vehicle. I'm getting out, I'm like, man, I don't know what's going on, this ain't a regular traffic stop. You know what I'm saying? Police create. Exactly, exactly. James, facts. The sheriff, the, the sheriff's was created for this. The police department branched off uh, the, the sheriff's department, the sheriff's office, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, they searched me and everything. Then I started noticing more police were pulling up. So now I'm, I'm in a dark area on dog road. It's at night. I'm thinking, like, man, if I move, these people going to kill me. So I'm trying to think my way out of this situation. So I was like, hey. I was like, hey, man, I don't know what's going on. But, man, you know, I can't afford to get in no trouble. I was like, bro, I recently got on the fire department. I can't. I can't have no problems with nobody. So he kind of, you know, bagged off then. And he had, he was like, well, you got any credentials. I gave him a fire department ID, he looked at it. So he was chill, talked to the other cops. Then he started profiling my cousin. He shined the light like, well, I know he ain't no fireman. He got dreadlocks and blah, blah, blah. Racism. So he go, Talking to my cousin, and you know, I don't know what they talking about. But anyway, they hung up, and it was like he didn't want to let it go. But eventually, they let me go. They let both of us go. I dropped me home. I head back home. Well, oh, before he let us go, he said, we fit the description uh, of, of suspects. They mentioned in a crime, somebody got shot somewhere. And allegedly, we fit the description of the people who shot somebody. You know, light skin, dark skin, dark, uh, dark color car. So, uh, oh, a, a lot of the stuff didn't make sense. But it is what it is. But we would have got locked up on a murder charge if it weren't for my fire department ID. Now, with that being said, let me go back to one of these clown chiefs that retired. And he was talking about, like he was basically taking up for other people saying that black people, they don't do the same thing when another black person get killed. Facts, facts. I'ma post that video that FBI agent getting stopped too. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, about the same one I was just talking about, uh, Roscoe was happening. Talking about, uh, you know, nobody on being an overall when uh, another black person get killed, blah, blah, blah. Right? He, uh, dang, I totally forgot what I, what I brought that up for. I don't remember, but he a clown. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, so one of my coworkers was telling him, like, hey, bro, listen. You are part of the problem. You want to throw a rock and hide your hand. Because now that you got you a good job and you made it out of the hood and you want to talk down about these people, what have you done to change the narrative? You ain't you ain't going in these neighborhoods. You got your own business. You ain't going in, teaching them nothing, hiring them. You ain't telling them how you got what you got in life. You ain't doing none of that, but you you want to you want to talk. No, you don't even have the right to open your mouth and say nothing about nothing going on, especially when you ain't trying to change nothing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna talk no, but I feel like I can because I'm one of the ones who are always trying to help people, who are always trying to show them 
how I got what I got. This is where I started at. This is where I am now. Let me show you how to do this. How, you know what I'm saying? I done help a lot of people. People try to pay me and everything. Bro, I don't want nothing from you. I don't, I don't want nothing. I, you know what I'm saying? All I want from you is to see you take the same knowledge I gave you. And you give it to somebody else and you help the next person. That's all I want. You know what I'm saying? So for this clown to talk reckless like that, you know what I'm saying? And I was cool with him in, 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 until he started talking reckless like that, man. Don't be part of the problem and then throw a rock and hide your hand, man. Uh, like, like his life perfect, like he ain't never done nothing. Bro, you done, done all kinds of stuff, man. A lot of people done done stuff. You know what I'm saying? Don't do the same thing then talk about the next person for doing something that you already did, you know? Man, I mean, bro, you smoke it. A lot of people have done a lot of dirt. And, you know, when somebody else do something petty, you know, they all over. Bro, you done done everything wrong under the sun. You, ain't, you don't have no right. You know what I'm saying? Clown, bro. But... But yeah, then, you know, I got into it with another co-worker years ago because he part of the problem. Rico was in it. Yeah, he part of the problem. Like, all this stuff go on and nobody want to talk about it. You know what I'm saying? They want to put band-aids on gunshot wounds. So, you know, the problem still exists, but if you keep quiet, Nobody gonna notice. How? When stuff keep happening every day, it's gonna be noticeable. You know what I'm saying? Every day something happening. So it ain't no be quiet, don't talk about it. Now talk about it. Put it on blast. You know what I'm saying? That's how you fix the problem. You don't want to deal with the problem because you're part of the problem. You know? But anyway, he try to, oh man, you're a good guy and you know what I'm saying? We don't need to talk about it and all that. No, no. I don't care what you say. Good, whatever. I don't want to hear. This the problem. We're going to talk about the problem. He got mad because I was talking about it. I was still on social media then. I said, bro, this is my Facebook page. You don't like what I got to say? You can get off him. He started talking crazy. So, of course, you know, the conversation ended up shifting to, you know, man, what's up? You know, like that. And eventually, he got dropped. You know, we speak to each other now. It's mutual, but I stand where I stand. I'm always stand where I stay. And I ain't going to fall for nobody ever. You know, whatever going to happen, it's going to happen. I ain't changing. I'm always going to be me. And if I see something messed up, I'm going to say something. Take it how you want to take it. You know, we're going to talk about what's going on. Because that's how you get it fixed. You don't want to talk about it. You don't want to fix it. You want to leave, leave it what it is. Nah, nah. We, we going to speak on it. All right, who got something to say? Can I, I, I go all day? You know, everything, every, everything in the U.S. was built on racism. I done heard people say this a lot of times. Just be glad that you're in the U.S. and be happy you're here. Number one. Ain't, ain't none of them black people asked to be here, number one. That's the first thing. No black person asked to be here, number one. Number two, you quit acting like America was the greatest thing ever because the reason of America is the America you know today is because of the work black people did. All that free labor. Black people built the White House. Black people put up these railroads. Black people put all these buildings up. So don't disregard what black people did now. <clears throat> Because America wouldn't be the America y'all know today. If black people wasn't playing in all in all these professional sports, it'll be boring. Jackie Robinson was on the black league at first. And they brought him to the white league. And then over time, they, you know, they combined it. It's just like football is the National Football League now. But it was, it was totally separate at first. The AFC and the NFC were two different leagues. It wasn't brought together as one unit. Everything was separated. So, 
Don't disregard the work the black people did and say, just be happy you here. Man, all this crap will be boring. Everything. None, you, it, none of this stuff wouldn't exist. You know what I'm saying? None of this stuff wouldn't exist. You you want to get a, a, a party popping right now, you play some some what we consider black music. You you play black music if you want to get a, 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 a party popping. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you you want to have a kickback. Black people with barbecuing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, bro, don't don't just my thing. Don't don't try to disregard black people like they don't do nothing and they lazy and all this other stuff, man. We wouldn't have the clocks, Big Ben, we, uh, the professional boxers. I don't remember the big black dude name. Uh, we wouldn't have none of this stuff if it weren't for black people. We, everything we know today, we wouldn't have. We would not have, bro. So. Man, these people be pissing me off, man. And they be letting people, the people who is, I guess, well, listen, because I'm about, I'm about to say everything backwards, because everything in my mind. But, man, listen, you want change, you need to make non-aggressive moves. Like, like I say, you don't want certain people in your neighborhoods, but, Patrol your neighborhood, go sign up to be police. Made since we start working for free. Facts. Facts. Yeah, you don't you don't want you don't want uh, certain people working in your neighborhoods. Can I'm gonna say, like when I grew up, man, the police harassed me and everybody around me all the time for absolutely no reason. Hound the bed, twelve years old. I was younger than that, probably. I was a little kid, probably eight. Thrown all on the police car, car hopped in the mug. Then they stand and want to punch you and tell you, stop moving. Man, this car hot. What you mean stop moving? It's hot. I'm burning. You know what I'm saying? Search it. Get mad because you ain't got nothing on you. You know what I'm saying? Just done all kind of dirty stuff. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, the way you fix that problem is you sign up to be police and you patrol your own neighborhoods. To this day, when I go to work at my job, I see the difference how the cops, white cops do in black communities, and then you take the same cops you go to white communities, how they act. You know what I'm saying? The where I work at is, is predominantly white areas. Something happened, man, the police beat us though. You go to black neighborhoods, something happened, we waiting on the police. Babies shot and all, we waiting on the police to get the How far come in and cops the cops beat us there at a freaking house fire. What can they do? Nothing. They they beat us there. So I see it from the front lines how it go down. Every day I see it. So as a whole, I ain't knocking cops, but I don't want to hear all this like they superhero type stuff either. They be doing a lot of dirty stuff. Not all of them, but a lot of them do dirty stuff. So I don't want to hear it, bro. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? I got 10 people that's police. My ex-wife is police. So it ain't like I hate police department. That ain't, that ain't what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is acknowledge the fact that they do a lot of dirty stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just, just acknowledge it. And, and if, you, if you consider yourself a good cop and you ain't standing up to the bad ones, you ain't no good cop. You, you just as dirty as the real stuff. Because I'm going to tell you this here. On the fire department. When somebody doing something wrong, guess what we gonna do? Hey, bro, you tripping? We we on your ass. We on your ass. You do something wrong with the fire department, you mistreat somebody on the internet. We we on your ass. We ain't finna let that happen. You know what I'm saying? Not saying people don't still try to do stuff, but we on them. The police department need to do the same thing. You see something, you say something. You don't let it happen? Hell no. Nah. You don't ever let it happen. Facts. Facts, Jane. You know? Oh, uh, it's like me, man. I don't care what race somebody is. Bro, they getting, a, they getting quietly killed every single time. Every time. In fact, silence is the same. You know, everybody get treated equally. You know, uh, hey, bro, I'm telling you, I'm throwing, a, not physically, a book. But when I say I'm throwing a book, it, all my knowledge... I'm doing it. I'm gonna make sure I do whatever I gotta do to save you, bro. So if I'm if I'm doing everything I gotta do 
to make sure you survive. I'm doing everything the right way. I'm speaking for you even when you can't speak for yourself. Why the police department can't do that, man? The way you make change is you start stepping up and you getting in them positions. You know what I'm saying? You Like I hear about the systemic racism in Chicago and Detroit, New York. If you live in this area, even though this hospital right here, in your area, you got to go to a hospital on the other side of the city. That's part of systemic racism. There's a hospital right here that I can't go to. That's part of the, the, the system. It needs to be changed. You know what I'm saying? You got people dying because they got to go all the way to the other side of the city with all this traffic and everything else. And then when you get over there, you got these people overworking, underpaid, and they woe up. You know what I'm saying? Nah. It need to be changed. You need, everything needs to be changed. You know what I'm saying? Do something about it. Fix it. Go sign up to be nurses, doctors, go to school or whatever. When I first got in the fire department, I talked about this. You get so many points if you're in the military, you got MT, paramedic, all this other stuff. Uh, bro, I, 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 Tyrone, I hope this is right. Rogers, Mr. Rogers, the one I'm calling you. I don't know if I said his name right. Time to pass a collision plate fixed. You know what I'm saying? But, bro, all right, so, for sure, for sure. Look, so, that was part of the hiring process, right? It was designed that way to weed black people out of the process because you got to think about it. Black people have been the underdogs in this country for 400 years, all right? Now, I know you ain't in their mind. I know you ain't going to school. I know you're uneducated. I know you ain't in the military. I know you this and that and blah, blah, blah. When black people start learning the system, guess what? They was in the military. They went and got the MT, certification, paramedic, firefighter, went, all this extra stuff. And a lot of black people had degrees. So now when the hiring process started, it's more black people got college degrees than any other race signing up for the job. So guess what? I switched the rules again. Uh, we ain't having it. Then, you know, they got a system that's still in place today. We gotta hire so many blacks, we gotta hire so many whites. That's currently the system, the systemic racism system right now to this day. It ain't about who the best person for the job, who has the most knowledge, and none of that. On the fire department I work on, it is not about who's the best candidate. It's about, I gotta have so many blacks, so many whites, all this. Casino, what's happening, man? What you been up to? Man, I'm getting deep, bro. You might want to share the video. Hey, listen, if you film the video, share it on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on whatever that exists, on your Snapchat, all that. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm going to have some haters because they part of the problem. You know, I know they're going to be some dislike that they part of the problem. They're racist. So it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Take that. But, like I was saying, the problem exists. Something needs to be done about the problem. Hey, channel your anger. You know what I'm saying? Quit going bucking whole crowds of police because when you when they when they whoop your ass and then they gonna get on TV and say this why I whoop your ass and, and, and we gonna walk off the job and y'all ain't gonna have nobody to protect you. For sure, for sure. They ain't gonna have nobody to protect you. So guess what? That's the best time. When all them walk off the job, when all these uh because everybody ain't racist, but when all these people walk off the job, get what you do? You go sign up for the job, and you patrol the neighborhoods. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, listen, a lot of people uh, don't, don't know this, but I used to work for uh, the, sheriff's, the sheriff's department. But, I, I, of course, I wasn't a cop. I, I was just a paramedic that was working in jail. But even though when you when you a paramedic working there, you still consider a cop. You get a badge and commission card and all the same stuff, right? So, so like, I use it for my, I got pulled over. Hey, oh, you're a cop. All right, they let you go. But I said, I brought that up to say this here. I see how other people working in the jail begin to tour with inmates. Every part I hit, my name ringing like I'm in the club or something. You know what I'm saying? You know why? Because I treat everybody the same way. Ain't talking down. Ain't in the, oh, you in here on merch or, yeah, you this and that, blah, blah, blah. Everybody get treated the same way. You know what I'm saying? 
So now, guess what? When I when I hit the pause and stuff, everybody wanna hey come come over to me, man, well, man, what's going on? Blah blah blah. blah. This, the same thing can happen on the street if you put the right people in position. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they know you're a cop, but guess what? You look like me, and you hadn't treated me bad. I feel like I can trust you, so guess what? They're more receptive. They're opening up. I've seen it with some of the black people on the police department here over time. I hadn't seen it in a while because, of course, I ain't on Facebook no more or none of that. But, man, a lot of this stuff went viral, man. They, you know what I'm saying? Like, like with my ex-wife, the area she worked in, all the people in the neighborhood knew who she was. They knew she was a cop. They knew who she was. And when they needed help, they knew she was going to help them. They seen something going on, what we consider snitching. They was telling, oh yeah, you know such and such them did that down there. The only reason she got that information because they know she gonna treat them right. You know what I'm saying? They trust her. The same thing can happen. People need to get in position. If, you know what I'm saying? Don't sit back on the sideline and talk noise and all this and, oh man, they keeping us beat down. Man, do something, bro. Do something about it. You know what I'm saying? Step up. Open, start a business, you know? If you don't, if you don't want to do it, all right, Master P, good example. They talk about this ancient mom and Uncle Ben's, all this stuff, races, right? You know what Master P did? He got Uncle P's rice, he got his own serve, he got all that. So I'm going to give you a choice now. You don't have to buy this racing product no more. You can buy mine. You know what the every black person going to do? Man, his rice was nasty. Yeah, them noodles was nasty. I ain't buying it. So even when another black person still up, y'all still got something to say. You know what I'm saying? You still beat them down. You get beat down by everybody else and your own people. Come on, bro. Come on. You done work hard and establish your bed and here you go with somebody, man. You get the hookup. And then you don't give them the hookup. You, you, you bash them. Talk bad. You know what I'm saying? But then you go to somebody else, a, a, another race, establishment and you pay full price and you don't complain and it could be horrible you ain't even complaining facts master hey man master p been getting back to the community been dropping knowledge been providing products been doing everything you know what i'm saying but you know how they painted him a long time ago he's a gangster he, he's this he's that everything under the sun you know, it's part of systemic racism. They were, they were, they were dogging the man out. They were saying all kinds of stuff about the man. And then when they see he wasn't feeding into it, he just kept doing his thing. And then look at him now. The man I'm forced to be reckoned with. Uh, oh, you mad at me because I don't want to partner with you. When they ain't hell nothing, you ain't want to help me. But now I done built my own stuff from the ground up. You want to take over. Now I'm doing my own thing. Yo, people need to do. Do their own thing. You know what I'm saying? People, listen, listen, bro. Colin Kaepernick. Let's, 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 let's talk about that for a minute. Not so much of what he did, you know what I'm saying? Raw TV, facts. Not so much of what he did. Now, he was a story. I appreciate him. But I'm talking about what he did with Nike, right? Partner with Nike. So a lot of people mad. The races, burning, burning the shoes up, all kind of stuff. But you got to think about this here. Black people, y'all don't realize how powerful your dollar is. That's the biggest problem. You don't realize how powerful. Nike knew that. They knew that it was no other race on this earth spending more money on Nike product than black people. You know why? Because black people flashing. Oh, I, oh, look what I got on. Uh, uh, uh. You go in the club, everybody got the same shit on. But look, check this out. They are, it was a business move. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, I ain't knocking Nike. I ain't saying they wasn't uh, rocking with the black wave. I ain't saying that. But at the end of the day, they're a business. So, I'm like, shoot, I'm, most of my customers, 90% of my customers is black. Let me rock with Colin, Ka I mean, uh, Colin Kaepernick and, and let him be the face of the brand. The sales going to increase. Yeah, I'm going to have some people mad, but guess what? Sales increase. And guess what happened? Sales shot through the freaking roof. Business move. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't mad at it. I'm just letting y'all know your dollar is powerful, bro. These factories and all this other stuff, 
wouldn't be popping in China and, and Thailand and uh, Taiwan or whatever. It wouldn't be popping if black people wasn't buying this shit. Because ain't nobody else buying this shit. How I many white people you see with Jordan's on? You know what I'm saying? They were new balance and, and sketches and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. New balance ain't finna uh, bag up uh, Colin Kaepernick because guess what? Shit, black people ain't buying that shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying everybody, but I'm just saying as a whole, they ain't buying it. Black people buy Nike. So, hey, we, he gonna be the spokesperson now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, um, yeah, and I'm glad these Confederate flags coming down at, at these, uh, like this, I don't know what it's called, professional race car shit. I just know it's Daytona 500, all this other shit. Guess what? You got all these racist people, oh, we ain't coming no more. Shit, yeah, like black people don't want to show up. We want to be here too. Yeah, we, we want we want to be here. We'll spend our money. We we spend money regulars anyway. That's, that's what we do. We'll make it back. Yeah, we'll make it back. I'll be there Monday morning complaining about I don't want to be there, but I'm going to do a good job while I'm there. I'm just, yeah, I don't want to be there. Shit, I might be late for work, but I'm there and I'm working. And they, all the customers know me by name. I know them. They just, that's what it is with us. But guess what? Shit, we like to drink beer too. Hey, let me get some of that band of peanuts. All that the all NASCAR. All that NASCAR with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So er, er, all this racist stuff, these people threatening to leave, or they ain't supporting baseball no more and all this shit. Black people beat up. Yeah. We'll, 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 go, we'll start going to baseball games. We'll, we'll be at the freaking uh, the golf tournaments, all that. We'll be everywhere that you say you don't want to be, we'll be there. <laughs> so let them go on. Bro, I'm telling y'all, I don't know if people realize, but it's way more non-racist people than racist people. And when y'all get together, everybody together, rocking together, they can, they can slaughter, not physically kill nobody, but I'm just saying, you can, you can keep pushing them out. You know what I'm saying? You can keep pushing them out. As long as everybody having dialogue, everybody working together, bro, you we could we could do away with it. It's, it's gonna take a long time, but we could do away with it, you know. But yeah, it's, it's, like I say, everything that people complain about, do something about it. Do something about it. Like I like what happened yesterday here where I live in. You know, they the Juneteenth represent the uh, freedom of the slaves. So guess what? You know what they did? They had a peaceful march. I like that. That's what I'm saying. Do something. Don't just don't just stand on the sideline and talk. Do something. You know. I don't, you know, it's cool we got professional athletes, but we need more black people as, as a judge, as a lawyer, as as a freaking uh, NASCAR driver, astronauts, uh, fashion designers, uh Architects, engineers, we we need more black people doing this stuff. You don't like the 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 construction worker that showed up at your house or down the street, uh, say showed up at your house. You don't like the construct the the AC repair man showed up at your house to fix your AC because he got a Confederate flag on his van. Won't you go to school to be an AC man or a woman? Go to school, do it yourself, promote your black business. You know what I'm saying? Do something. Do something about it. Quit talking. Quit talking, bro. Do something. You know what I'm saying? Quit being violent all the time, man. Because as a, as a whole, I don't care what nobody say. As a whole, black people are really peaceful people. The reason black people get so aggressive is because you you constantly being beat down. You're going to be aggressive, too. You bag a dog in the corner, he's going to bite you. <laughs> going to rip your leg off. You, you leave him alone, he peaceful. He ain't bother nobody. You mess with him, he got you. So, same concept. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, listen. Learn how to channel that anger. Do something. Sign up for these same jobs that you complain is racist people in. Sign up for it. If you feel like the company racist, don't spend your money there. You start your own company or go support somebody who is done racist or go support a black business. I ain't getting on these videos and just saying like, hey, don't support other race business. I ain't saying that. What I'm saying is give people more options. You know what I'm saying? Start your own business. 
or go support somebody who is not known to be a racist. You know, man, it's ways of dealing with situations without being angry and, and aggressive and want to hurt everybody. You know what I'm saying? Do something about it. Votes count. I don't care what nobody, oh, my vote don't count. Man, you're stupid. You sound stupid. At one point, you didn't even have the right to vote. You got the right to vote now, and you still complain. I ain't going to vote. You need to vote, man, for real. It started at the lower level, man. I'm talking about superintendents of schools and, and, and all that. City council people, man, all kind of stuff to be your uh, vote. You know, you vote on everything. You know, you want to see change. It started at the lower level before it get up. How you expect to vote here and you won't change here, but you ain't got nothing to support it? You need all the support first. You know what I'm saying? You need some more people in Congress that think like you think. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate it, Bernard. But you can't you can't build a house with no foundation. You know that's what that's what, this the thing about Trump. What Trump do? Yeah, Trump the president. He up here. But he, so he filled his whole foundation with people that's going to be yes man and agree with him and think like he think. And that's why people really, he can say what he want to say and do what he want to do and you can't do nothing about it. Oh, we're going to impeach him. Man, that man laughed. That man got on TV and laughed at y'all, bro. Uh, financial literacy. Uh, we can uh, come and pop. Hey, facts. Listen. Financial literacy is key to success, man. And you got, man, listen. Let me let me let me switch gears for a sec. Alright. Let's talk about being a drug dealer, right? Drug dealer, he already know. Use your terms. Re up. When you're going to go buy more products. Oh, let me read this. Trump doesn't know much about the country as people put in place of him. Facts! The dude was really stupid. But you got people on the outside looking in like, he'll be, you know? That's because he, he surrounded himself with the right people. All my company, I mean, uh, all the companies that my parents them own, they don't know everything, but guess what? They got a lot of people that work for them. They're smart than them all. Got all kinds of degrees and everything. They know how to do a whole lot of stuff. They taught me some stuff. You know, I just show up like, hey, I need help with this. Why they doing it? I'm sitting there learning. Yeah, 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 okay, I got this. I don't need you no more. I done learn now. You know what I'm saying? I done done a whole bunch of stuff that I knew nothing about, but I took the time to learn it. But, dang, what I was just talking about? Man, I forgot. Oh, Trump fit, uh, surrounded himself with a bunch of people. Is that what I'm talking about? I guess. Oh, drug dealers. So check this out. So, yeah, you sell this dope in the hood. You got you got a lot of talent and skills, right? Used in the wrong way. You selling dope, you, you, you know, you're hurting people in your community, right? There's a lot of crime coming with selling dope. But you take them same skills, you ain't been to college a day in your life. You take them same skills, say you open a car wash, a lawn service, just whatever. But you, some type of business, you take them same skills you learn in the street and you put it in a professional environment, can't nobody touch you. Can't nobody. No people mad at Bill Melf. Yeah, they were selling dope, but them people had a whole lot of businesses. Whole lot of businesses. Them people owning everything, them people doing doing good, yeah, they were still selling dope. But I'm just saying, man, what's was happening? These people had businesses. You take your same skills that you using for crime, I'm, I'm going to just say crime, you use it for crime, you take them same skills and you switch gears and you have a... Uh, uh, a, a business that the law approves, man, ain't nobody standing under you, man. Your you work at this, bro. Listen, you working on holidays, you working in the middle of the night while people sleep. You gotta think about drug dealers, they sell dope 24 7. They don't care what it is. They be in the hospital in ICU, they make a phone call. Yeah, I need that transaction done. You take that same mindset and put it in a professional environment, bro. Ain't nobody standing under you. Nobody. Yeah, man, just, hey, you don't have to have no college degree to start a business. YouTube videos, you can learn how to do all kind of stuff. All kind of stuff, bro. I done learn how to fix so much stuff from watching YouTube. Bro, listen, y'all need to learn some financial literacy. You need to learn about a whole lot of stuff, man. And quit pushing these kids to the side, you old school people. I always pushing, 
kids to the side, oh, I don't want to hear that. Man, you can learn a lot from a kid. You just have no clue how much you can learn from a kid if you just sit there and be quiet. The same stuff you telling them, tell yourself that. Take your same advice. Just sit back and be quiet and listen to them and watch them. Man, these kids smarter than them all. You ain't never seen no kid like that. Man, my baby was walking seven months. I started teaching her when she was five months old. Seven months, my baby was walking. The stuff my baby do right now is two-year-old. I've, my other kids I ha haven't done. I ain't never seen, I seen a few, you know what I'm saying? Looking at YouTube and stuff, I see kids. But with my own eyes, somebody else, I ain't never seen no other kid do what my two-year-old can do. My two-year-old can have a whole conversation. You know what I'm saying? We riding in a car. We just passing by certain areas. She, she already know when we close by somebody's house. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, we, we buy green. You know what I'm saying? Just, my baby will sit there and watch you. One time, she see you do something, she know how to do it at that point. Man, you ain't never seen no kids like this before. Never. You know, y'all gonna pull a video up on YouTube with this lady had this baby and the, and, the, and the baby came out. They delivered the baby and the doctor's holding the baby. The baby walking. Just born, walking. They holding the baby, the baby just walking. Organized steps. Y'all ain't never seen this before, bro. I'm telling you. Take time out. Listen to them kids. Work as a unit. Bro, you don't force to be wrecking with. Can't nobody do nothing with you. Nobody. Power. Power moves, bro. Quit. If you're doing business, don't put your kids to the side, man. Let them kids learn. You know what I do with my stuff right now? All right. And I got it from my dad. You know, he taught my daughter how to do a bunch of stuff. But, like, to organize my, just say I'm preparing for my ill taxes or something. I taught my daughter how to do it. She, she break down the mileage. She break down the fuel receipts, how many gallons was purchased, what state or whatever. Boom, boom, boom. She crunched the numbers. All right, Dad, I got this done. Oh, uh, like paperwork, sending emails, all kind of, hey, I need you to shoot such and such email, do this and that or whatever. You know what I'm saying? She 14. But she, my dad started having a door when she was like 12. But, so quit pushing these kids to the side, man, because these kids are smart. And, you know, the people who do have business or whatever you have, you're like, oh, I want to pass it down to my kids. Well, if you ain't, if you ain't, and still, this knowledge in the kids, the kids ain't gonna have it long. It, it's just like you got a million dollar insurance policy, you never taught your kid about financial literacy, you die, yeah, your kid got a million dollars for the first month, and that kid is losing money by the day. That kid gonna be broke in two years. Cause you ain't taught them that. Quit pushing them to the side, man. Teach them how to pay bills online. Teach them all kind of stuff. Tons of videos I've seen with kids don't even know how to pump fuel. They're not, they trying to take physical cash and put it in a pump. Bro, tell y'all, these kids is computer smart. A lot of other people is hands-on smart. Y'all combine that, bro, can't nobody touch y'all. Nobody. Powerful, man. Powerful. See some. Say something. That's what it is. Y'all got any questions before I get off here? Cause I'm about to get off. You going to go buy a vehicle? Take that kid with you. Let that kid see what's going on. Hey, we got to rate credit. Uh, look how this man is still trying to get over on you. Yeah, teach your kid that, man. For these kids graduate from college, or if they go to college, you know, get these good jobs, make all this money. You know what I'm saying? Man, my dad told me he'd been, been in young people's house for like 23 years old. 21, 22, 23 years old. Got a half a million dollar house and that AC unit go up. And you know why? Because you now you need to replace a whole AC unit in a half a million dollar house. Because they ain't changed the AC filter. A filter costs $7. That's so what I'm saying, bro. They super smart. But the stuff you know, you need to teach them. You get a whole AC unit replaced because you ain't changed a filter? Come on, bro. Teach these kids how to change filters. You know what I'm saying? 
I was, I was working at Station 11 one time. This dude's son, one of the uh, captains, his son was grown. Bro, he ain't not to put air in his tie. He ain't his car tie. He ain't not to put air in it. So, the, the, the computer technology brain of the kid and your hard working hands on brain as an adult, you combine it. Ain't nobody touch y'all. See something, say something. Hey, got my shirt, Black Lives Matter. And one more thing before I get out of here. Because y'all see this, this Black Lives Matter movement, facts, balance. Movement, right? Black Lives Matter don't mean nobody else's life don't matter. So let me put that out there. It don't mean the best business. Man, something happened with my, something happened with my internet, man. It messed the phone up. But anyway, yeah, uh, hey, man, I appreciate it, bro. Let me make sure I ain't missing no comments before I get out of here. Still trying to remember to help sell the campaign. Test positive. Dang. That's messed up. Man, they pump him up with all this stuff, too. They need to pump other people up with it, too. Yo, see something, say something, man. Teach these kids, bro. You know what I'm saying? And people need to learn a lot, man. So, one more, uh, this is another thing, all right? I seen where well, a lot of people, they get on there and say, I know my rights, I know my rights, you ain't gonna do this and that, bop, 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 bop. you get your ass beat, you got, you got beat up, you know what I'm saying? You know your rights, let them people do what they gotta do. When you get done, go get your lawyer, you go file a complaint or whatever, then you hit the police department pocket, you know what I'm saying? Sue them and you, you get you a few hundred thousand dollars or whatever the case may be. Get your record expunged. Now you now your record's still good and you got a lot of money. Take that money, go start your business or whatever you gotta do. Quit walking these people, bro. It's ways to to get back at them without it being physical. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna tell you right now. Police stop me. And I know and I, I know they wrong for what they doing. It's an illegal stop. They doing all this stuff to me, they take me to jail. I am complying. It is what it is. Yeah, I know I'm right, but it is what it is. I'm going to jail. I'm bail out. I'm going to get my lawyer, and it's finna go down. I'm finna, I'm finna hit the police department for everything they got. Appreciate you for this come up. I'm finna have a come up on y'all. Yeah, you ain't finna say, oh, he ain't complied, so we had to beat him. No, I'm gonna do what you say do. You take me to jail, okay, so illegal stop, illegal arrest. All right, cool. Let's rock with it. But you best believe, boy, woo, me and my lawyer, we about to work, y'all. Man, we about to have all kind of money. Can't win. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You can't win on the side of the road, man. Can't win. You just comply. Don't know about your business. Look at it as an opportunity to get some money. It's an opportunity. Make everything an opportunity. Make every situation an opportunity. Every situation is a learning experience. Everything. That's why I'm complaining about nothing I went through. I learned from it. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, the Black Lives Matter movement, just because we say Black Lives Matter don't mean nobody else's life don't matter. The problem is the fact that there's too many people that act like everybody's life matter and Black Lives don't matter. Oh, they just complain. Black people always complain. They this and that. They ought to be happy there in the U.S. Nah, bro. You get treated bad. You know what I'm saying? You look at... I'm finna tell you, I've seen structures fall. Not physically fall. I'm talking about the internal system fall because of racism. So check this out. Uh, so, alright. Somebody I know, because I don't want to uh, get too deep in it. Facts. Facts. I don't want to get too deep in it, but somebody I know personally, their uh, supervisor or manager or whatever got fired from the position they was in. All right, the black lady got fired, and they filled it with a younger white guy. The reason she got fired, not because she did nothing wrong, 
is because the white girl complained and said all this stuff she was doing, which it, it wasn't true. You know what I'm saying? But she went in crying. All right? So follow me for a minute. So now you got the young white guy in this position. He ain't qualified. He don't know nothing about it. And he got to be trained by the people he worked for. The people, I mean, the people that work under him. The people that work under him have to train him. Why is he in this position? Because of systematic racism. I got to put white person in this position to make white superior and blacks inferior. I need to at least get that illusion. And that happens. When I was working at the jail, right? All right. This girl, uh, well, this woman, I don't, don't want to say names. She my dog. She was in charge. She know the system inside out, right? They hired this, this white lady to be over her. She had to teach the white lady how to be her boss. You know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, I've, I've seen over and over and over strokes that fall apart because of systematic racism. Um, I'm going to put a white person in this position. Well, this white person you put in this position don't know nothing about it. So your whole system finna fall apart because you 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 want to be, you want to have this hatred for blacks because you don't want black people in this position. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro. <laughs> It happens. It happens more than what people think. Systematic racism is big. And like I say, I gave the example of this black cat. Oh, it's a black cat. He, he bad luck. Oh, you were all black. The funeral, black is bad. White, white is period. You were white to a wedding. It's a celebration. Man, it's so, it's so much systematic racism around us. It's ridiculous, bro. Like I say, black lives matter. It don't mean that no other life don't matter. And... See some, say some, do some, step up, and get in place, get in position if you don't like what's going on around you. Uh, Reteach themselves the truth. Facts. Uh, real all-inclusive U.S. history. Hey, they don't, they don't want to talk about it because the truth hurts. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I was reading this stuff today and watching these videos. How... A lot of the white kids, by the adults, they had them reading all these books and all this other stuff to make black people seem like real, real horrible people. So when they grew up, they, they grew up as racist because the stuff that was put in their mind, the people making them read all these books and making them seem like black people was the worst people ever, they was trained that way because naturally, a kid isn't racist. No kid is racist. And they're still being taught. The adults teach them to be racist. You know what I'm saying? This dude I used to work with, right? He'll fire me too. I used to work with him at my one of my old part-time jobs. He fat. He in his household, he was he was raised to be racist. Super cool dude. And he was talking to me about this. So uh, I was like, well, why you ain't racist? He said, man, believe it or not, even though my parents was racist, they had this black lady that used to work for them. And she was like our nanny. She used to take care of us. And my wild parents were out doing whatever they were doing, right? They were like, man, this lady has never, ever treated us wrong, did us bad. Man, the lady took care of us better than our parents did. So I really had no reason to be racist because they saying this, but I see something different. I don't see black people doing this stuff that my parents saying they're doing. So that's how he didn't grow up racist. Me and him had another, uh, you know, we was talking, and he said he'll never let his daughter date a black guy. So instantly, my mind was like, damn, that was racist coming. But he made a lot of sense with what he said. He was like, if his daughter dated a black guy and they have kids, they got biracial kids, those kids are going to get treated bad by blacks and by whites. Blacks, oh, you ain't black enough. Whites, you ain't white. 
You don't really fit in with either one of us. So those kids are mentally beat down, and in some cases physically beat down. He like, I don't want that for my grandkids. I don't want to see my grandkids hurt and I can't do nothing about it. It made a lot of sense. And I can't knock him for that. Because black people definitely, oh, that was some light skin shit right there. Oh, that was some dark skin shit. So fucking racist uh, within your race. You know what I'm saying? In fact, we need to change that shit. We need to change this shit. You know, uh, of course, it was programmed in us. Because, you know, light skins in the house and dark skins in the field. It was programmed, but we need to reprogram ourselves. You know what I'm saying? And quit looking at another black person coming up as a bad thought. Oh, you think he better than us? Look at him. He got this. He got that. No, your ass need to get close to him and figure out how can you come up too. Man, what did you do to become successful? Teach me this shit. So I don't have to rob you and steal your shit and be mad at you. I, I need to learn what you learn. And then you come up too. So yeah, you need to be, your mind need to be reprogrammed. Quit hating no people. You know what I'm saying? You can get the same shit. But hopefully I can cover all points of, you know what I'm saying, the situation. Start a business. If you don't like, if you don't like what other people doing, support black business. Quit tearing other black people down and quit segregating yourself within your race. Light skins over here, dark skin over here. That's some bullshit. Uh, every white person ain't racist. So get that out your head. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all cops ain't bad. So, you know what I'm saying? Quit being mad at all the police. Uh, the ones that are racist and dirty be on their ass trying to get them fired. They got to go. They got to fucking go. They got to go. Uh, you know, that's what it is, man. At the end of the day, no matter how people like it, the police department and the civilians got to work together. See, or you're going to be out protecting yourself. See, uh, John Wayne was a fucking racist. Christopher Columbia, a racist, a murderer, a killer. All the fucking pilgrims, they was dirty. You know, black people been coming to the U.S. way before slavery. The, the, the reason the racist people on these slave trades even knew how to you knew knew how to get to the U.S. because of the black navigators. You know what I'm saying? Black people been trading goods with the Indians way, way before slavery. Way before slavery. They, they already knew how to get back and forth. You know what I'm saying? Lean with love. Facts. Facts. Good heart. Uh, won't have to worry about it. Man, that's so true. But no, that's, that's super true. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Uh, you know, we got all these basically horror stories about you know, black people that know she is and all that. Man, black people are the most creative, smartest, visionaries, entrepreneurs that has ever existed on this earth, bro. And people need to understand that. Wake up and understand that. Black people are naturally not aggressive, hateful people as a race. It's a reaction to what happens to black people, but naturally black people aren't. That's how the fuck black people came slaves. Fucking being nice and shit. Oh, hey, how you doing, John? And boom, boom, boom. Got your ass beat and kidnapped and put on the fucking slave ship. You know what I'm saying? Because you're too fucking nice. That's what happens. Black people are naturally nice. Yes, we are our own worst enemies. You know what I'm saying? You've been, been bamboozled. You know what I'm saying? Hey, listen. Black people are good people, bro. That's what it is. They're, they're mad and angry because of what happens to them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, black people just want to be like every other race. You want to go to work, come home to your wife or your girlfriend and your kids and teach your kids shit and play football with them. And if you religious, go to church together. You just want to be normal. You don't want to be bothered. You don't want to be in your own house and motherfuckers like that come down to your house, bother you at your own house that you go to work for every day and pay for. You know what I'm saying? 
You want to go to work and man your own business. You don't want to go to work and have a racist motherfucker standing over you trying to, man, my dad told me some shit that happened to him when he was in high school, how these racist people did him wrong at work and man, they was doing all kinds of stuff. He never complained. He just outworked their ass. And they were mad because he outworked him, and they still found a reason to fire him. You know? Uh, but never became aggressive and angry or none of that. He just, he just outworked them. That's the thing. So be peaceful. That's how you get changed. Be peaceful. That's how you get changed. You know? Be like Martin Luther King. Don't be like Malcolm X. Malcolm X will whoop your ass. Martin Luther King wasn't whooping ass, and that's how he got changed. That's why every fucking street in every city is called MLK, Martin Luther King, because he wasn't aggressive, you know what I'm saying? He was a victim. He got beat down, and then he ended up getting killed just for speaking the truth. That's it. He ain't never did nothing to nobody. But that's what it is, man. Y'all be easy. I'm out of here. I'm highly child. Peace.